Hey everybody, how you doing today? Mark here, standing in my kitchen, ready to make just a salad, but we're gonna make potato salad. That's right everybody, uh, today what I want to do is I'm not focusing on the main dish for our meal and it's actually for tomorrow, but what I want to do is I want to make potato salad and in order for me to do this the way that my mom makes potato salad and she makes a fabulous potato salad, I got to cook the potatoes tonight so that they can rest overnight and the starches all tighten up and everything that way it's not all falling apart and kind of gross and I don't know, kind of uh, pasty. Is that a good word to use? Yeah, I think so. It's very easy and you'll just be amazed on how good this is. A lot of people overcomplicate simple little side salads like potato salad and coleslaw and a macaroni salad. They throw so many seasonings and so many flavors in there that the main dish just kind of vanishes, okay? I do not want a Cajun Creole Korean, Japanese, Mongolian, German style potato salad, okay? I'm looking for a very basic, simple potato salad because that is the best way to have a potato salad. And we're gonna make it today. So I've got everything on the counter, but right now I'm only dealing with two ingredients. Of course, potatoes. Gotta have potatoes and potato salad. The second ingredient is eggs. i would tilt this a little bit more, but I'm afraid that they'll roll out. <laughs> This is like the major component to my mom's potato salad because I've told you guys before in other videos, my mom's potato salad is technically like egg salad with potatoes in it, okay? So for the three pounds of potatoes that I have sitting over here, I have seven eggs. Actually, it's uh, almost three and a three quarter pounds. So yeah, I'm using seven eggs. Basically, it's almost like a one egg for every half pound of potato. <laughs> All right, let's get going. All we got to do is uh, cut up the, uh, the potatoes. We're going to peel and cut them, and then we're going to boil them. You've got to make sure you boil them right and don't overcook them, okay? So we're going to keep a close eye on it. But I got a new fangled little machine that actually cooks eggs properly. Yeah, so we're going to play with that. It's actually my daughter's, but we're going to play with it. Okay, let's start uh, peeling and cutting the potatoes. Okay, simply peel your potatoes just like you're making uh, roasteds or mashed potatoes or whatever. Just peel them up. And when you get dark spots like that on your potato, really don't worry about it. Don't sit there and keep on peeling it, okay? And if I can't get a little bit of the uh, peel, don't worry about it, just leave it. Basically the reason we peel the potatoes is just because the uh, skin can kind of get to be almost muddy tasting in a way. And that's the reason why we take it off. Even if you wash it, the uh, skins can still taste kind of muddy and dirty. But if you leave a little bit on there, that's fine. Okay, so I've got my potatoes actually in a little bit of water here. This will help prevent any browning. Now I'm gonna take my cutting board again, and we're just gonna give these a nice rough chop. I don't want the pieces too small. So maybe half inch to an inch or so. You know, nice little bite-sized chunk. Put these right back in the water so they don't go brown on you. And grab out another one. There we go. Easily taken care of. All right guys, so on the stove here, I've got a pot of water with maybe, maybe two inches of water. And I'm gonna put that on high heat and I'm just gonna take the potatoes 
and the water that's in this bowl and just dump them right in. That water is maybe an inch from the top, okay? I don't want it any fuller than that. In fact, I might end up dumping some of the water out. And uh, we're just gonna bring this up to a boil. Once it comes up to a boil, um, we'll almost start checking for doneness almost right away. It's possible that they could fully cook before it actually reaches a boil. So <laughs> that's what I'm saying. This is the part that you really got to be mindful of. Okay. All right. So this is the product that my daughter has and it's basically an egg cooker. It's all it really does, but you can cook eggs in it in different ways. According to this, you make deviled eggs, soft boiled eggs, poached eggs, omelets, all with this stupid little thing. <laughs> Unbelievable. And they use it quite a bit. Uh, both my daughter and my wife use this. And here's the little machine. The uh, lid actually locks in place so it doesn't come off. Inside you get this little tray here and this is the heating element on the bottom. So what's neat about this is I've got seven, eight, seven eggs to cook and this holds seven eggs. <laughs> okay with the little egg thing if you're gonna um, cook your egg into a, uh, a boiled egg type consistency, whether it be soft boiled or hard boiled, they give you this little measuring cup. And uh, I don't know if you can see the little markings on there or not, but you got uh, soft, medium, and hard. So you just fill this up with water to whatever doneness you want your egg to be. But on the bottom, see that little pin that's sticking up right there. You see that? What you do with that is you actually take your egg and crush it onto that. I know, sounds weird, doesn't it? So I'm gonna do this to all seven eggs. Listen to that one more time. It sounds nasty. All right, so I'm gonna keep doing that until they're all done. And then we'll actually start the cooking process and I'll get the water measured out and everything. Okay guys, as you can see, I've pierced the bottom of the eggs, but I've got all the holes up. So the, the bigger end of the egg is up on top where the pointier end is actually down in the tray. I'm gonna take my water here and just pour it right down into there. Put the lid on and then we'll just hit the power button. And then uh, this will chime once the eggs are done. All right, now I want to emphasize, you don't want to stir your potatoes too much, but I want to make sure that nothing's sticking together or anything like that. I want to make sure that the hot water is getting all around all the pieces. Okay, everybody, it looks like my potatoes are now coming up to a boil. And I can tell just by stirring them that they're not done yet. And I wish I could sit here and tell you exactly how long it's going to take, but it's dependent. How thick did you cut your potatoes? Did you leave them whole? Okay, so those are all variations on what's going to happen. You know, how, how hot is your burner and how hot does it get? And there's just too many variables. You just got to sit here and just every so often just pick up a ladle, you know, a spoon and see if you can pierce it with a knife. If you can't pierce it, they're not done. Okay, my potatoes have been actually boiling for about five minutes now. I wanna grab one of my larger pieces here. And see, okay, you see how it just slid right in? That's what we're looking for right there. Let's see about grabbing another one. Yeah. See, goes in fairly easy, so the potatoes are done. Okay, all I want to do is just get them out of the water, get them strained off, and then I'm actually going to dump them right back into this bowl that I originally had them in when I cut them up. Yeah, the potatoes actually got done faster than the eggs did. <laughs> All right, guys, that is the charm for the egg timer. Cool. Yeah, you see this right here? You see what happened with that egg right there? Kind of came out of our little hole, but that's why you put the hole in it, is so it can expand out like that. But now all I'm going to do is just put all my eggs in with my potatoes, 
and I'm going to let these sit on the counter for a number of hours just to cool down to room temperature because then what we're going to do is we're going to put it in the refrigerator overnight and have them completely chilled okay and I don't want to put everything in the refrigerator right now because as I said everything's hot and if I go and put that in the refrigerator in about two hours time everything in my refrigerator will be hot <laughs> yeah thermodynamics it sucks all right i'll see you guys tomorrow and we will finish off the potato salad okay guys it is the next day and now we are going to finish off this potato salad i got everything laid out on the counter now i want you to know that making a potato salad it's all up to you on what you want to do for seasonings and stuff like that okay i'm just going to give you basic amounts okay if you don't like the amounts i'm giving you in the recipe adjust them okay if you don't think it's uh too salty add more if you think it's overly salty remove some okay same with the pepper you know if that's not enough pepper add some more if it's too much pepper take some out okay so i'm just giving you the amounts to start with and then from there you can play with it however you want now remember i'm also using only about three and a half pounds of potatoes normally i would use a five pound potato batch in order to make potato salad but my sack had a couple of potatoes missing, so I've got about three and a half, three and three quarters, something like that. All right, so let's get into finishing this potato salad. Here are my potatoes and my boiled eggs. I've got a little bowl of water back here, and what I'll do is I'll crack the shell on the eggs and then actually peel them underwater. I don't have to do it this way. I could peel them just in the sink, underwater. Either way, just make sure you got all the shells off, okay? I also have a egg slicer, just a little wire style thing. Okay, for the sauce, I'm gonna use Miracle Whip, not mayonnaise. Again, if you like mayonnaise, if you wanna use Dukes or Hellman's or anything like that, you go right ahead. I'm using Miracle Whip. I've got some yellow mustard here. Of course, it's upside down, but as you see, it is French's kosher salt, black pepper, garlic powder, and this is the secret ingredient that my mom held out on me for so long. This is horseradish. Yeah, for so many years, I was trying to figure out what that ingredient was. And I just never could figure it out because she doesn't use that much of it. She only uses like a teaspoon and a half to two teaspoons per five pounds of potatoes. So it's not much, but you can tell there was something there. I just could not identify it. <laughs> so horseradish, that was the secret ingredient. Okay, I've also got two things to cut up. One is an onion. Again, if I was had the full five pounds of potatoes, I would use the whole onion. I might back off just a little bit when I'm making this potato salad since it's a smaller batch. And then I've also got one stalk of celery. Again, if it was a five pound batch, I would use two stalks of celery. But since it's a little bit lighter, I'm only gonna use one. Okay, so I first wanna make my sauce. I'm gonna pour everything into this little bowl here. And again, slightly smaller batch than I'm used to. I would typically use this full jar of mayonnaise, but I'm only gonna use about half to three quarters of it. So that'd be maybe a cup and a half or so of mayonnaise. I'm not really measuring anything. I just kind of go by feel. I'm going to say that much mustard. If I had to take a guess, it was probably a teaspoon and a half to two teaspoons. Here's a little bit of salt. Again, not measuring, just going by what I think it's gonna need. I'm gonna say that was about a a teaspoon and a half of salt, pepper, about a half teaspoon of pepper, garlic powder, not much. Again, maybe a quarter teaspoon on that. And for the horseradish, this I'm actually going to use the measuring spoon just to measure it out, or not to measure it out, but just to scoop it out. But one heaping half teaspoon of horseradish. Yeah, you know what? I want a little bit more. I'm gonna say that I'll probably closer to a full teaspoon. Just gonna take a little whisk here. And just bring it all together. Okay, now here's the one thing that a really good cook should do. 
you gotta taste it guys I think I nailed it I got a little bit of that horseradish in there it actually makes you uh, uh, salivate um, just enough garlic powder might go a little bit heavier on the black pepper not sure yet I want to get everything all mixed together first okay yeah I think that's good okay now I'm gonna do a step that's a little weird and different because one of Vic's friends is going to eat dinner with us tonight and she does not like onion at all so I'm actually going to get as much of this mixed together as possible before I actually add the onion. That way I can pull out a little bit for her so she can have an onionless potato salad. That's gonna be the only odd thing. So right now I'm going to um, slice up the onion and the um, uh, celery. <laughs> Mine was uh, gone. Gotta peel the eggs and everything like that. I normally would put everything in the bowl except for the eggs toss it all together all the sauce and everything and then do up the eggs and add those to the top and then just slightly mix it in you don't want to put the eggs with the potatoes and then mix that up and then add the sauce and mix that up and then add the onion and celery and then mix that up because after all that mixing the eggs are just going to turn to mush and i want to try to leave them as decently structurally sound as possible okay so i'm going to quickly add my sauce here to the potatoes as you can tell i took the uh, whole eggs out i'll shell those in a bit do that i'm going to keep this in the bowl for stirring all right for the celery i'm going to cut off the ends that are a little dry and brown now what i like to do is i actually like to kind of cube it up a little bit i don't like full slices of celery in there so i'll split that in half then towards the uh, wider end, I'll split that as well. Just like that. That's kind of what you're looking for. Split a little more than halfway. I should be able to get some nice cubage. And I'm just making maybe, maybe eighth inch slices here. All right, that's it. That's all my celery right there. I'm not a huge celery fan, so I don't want too much. Now, right now I'm gonna cut my onion, but I'm not gonna add it to the bowl just yet. All right, for now, I am going to use only half of my onion. I'm just gonna chop it up and see if I like the quantity that I'm getting. Again, I try to cut it up in as small pieces as I can. This is an older onion that's starting to get a little soft on me. Um, yeah, I think I'm only going to do this half onion. So I'm just going to leave that right now. And now what I want to do is I want to start doing my eggs. Now what I do is I smack it down, crack the shell, and then roll it just to get smaller shell pieces. And then I put it in the water and just try to flake it off. Again, I was using some older eggs. So they might stick a little bit. Yep, that's coming off. Once you get under that uh, membrane, it usually goes pretty well, but sometimes that membrane just sticks to the white of the egg. And in fact, it is doing it to this egg a little bit, but it doesn't have to look pretty. So as you can see there, it got really, uh, <laughs> really mangled. That membrane stuck a little bit, but that's okay. I want to give you a closer view of what I was doing with the egg on how I was cracking it open. I just tap it on the counter and then roll it. You see how that shell has got all those cracks and everything in it? Then you just stick it in the water 
and you start kind of picking them off. And that, that right there, right on my finger there, that's the membrane I'm talking about. So once you get that kind of broken and torn apart, usually it comes right off the egg. Not always, but usually. Yeah, that one came off a lot cleaner. Okay, so typically I would have the onions in the bowl as well, and then I would uh, chop up the eggs, mix everything up, and we were pretty much done. However, this time I'm doing it a little different. So I'm gonna mix this without the onion, and I'm only gonna, uh, I'm not gonna put the egg in it either, but I wanna get everything mixed up. And then what I'll do is I'll take out a little portion for Vic's friend and add a little bit of the egg to her bowl and then add the rest of the egg to the main bowl. Does that make sense? So I got my celery, my sauce, and the potatoes all in here. We're just gonna mix this together real quick. Starting to think I might need a little more mayonnaise. It's just looking a little dry. All right, so I'm gonna add, I'm gonna say that I'm gonna add maybe another quarter cup of mayonnaise. Yeah, that's already looking a lot better. Okay, so I'm gonna use this little bowl here for Vic's friend. So I'm just going to put eh, about that much in the bowl. I'm gonna set that aside for now. I'm gonna pl place an egg in there, just slice it down through. And then what I wanna do is I'll pick it back up Lay it the other way and slice through again. That way they're nicely diced. Look at that, look at that. That's nice. Just dump it in, put it down, turn it 90 degrees, go down again. Okay, now I saved my most pristine egg because I want to just slice this once. Just like that, I'm gonna leave it there. Okay, now I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of this egg, put it in Vic's friend's bowl here. Yeah, I'll say about that much. Take a spoon and just kind of stir it in as lightly as possible. I'm gonna say that's good enough. Now for the rest of the main bowl here, I'll add the onion. And then I'll give it everything a little toss here. All right, that looks pretty good. Everything looks well mixed. Now what you do for decoration, if you wanna serve this to your friends and family, take it to a family reunion or something like that. This one egg that you just sliced, you just place the slices all over the top. Try to leave the yolk intact. And there you have it. Now, of course, you don't need to do this with the, uh, the whole egg. You can just slice it up and put it in the salad with all the other ones, okay? It's all up to you. I was just doing it for a presentation purpose, okay? All right, there you go, guys. Look at that nice, chunky potato salad. So simple. I hate it when restaurants sit there and try to turn potato salad into something it was never meant to be. I don't want that Cajun, Creole, Korean, Japanese, Hungarian, German potato salad. <laughs> I just don't want that stuff. I want a nice potato salad, simple seasonings. That's all it needs. That's all it needs. Let's take a bite of this. And look at all that egg in there. <laughs> this is why we call it 
egg salad with potatoes. <laughs> mm, not bad. Of course, as it sits, it will uh, combine all the flavors even more, so they become even better. But I may end up going back in and sprinkling the top with just a little bit more black pepper and a little more salt. Mm. Potatoes are done perfectly. And if you want a potato that's got a little more uh, mouthfeel, a little more chew to it, use red potatoes or, or a combination of reds and russets. I mean, you really can't go wrong. And in fact, if you want to do a better combination so you're not using two different potatoes use Yukon Golds okay they are higher starch content than a red but a lower starch count than the russets so that's kind of the best of both worlds god this is really good and like I said if the flavorings are just a little off for your liking play with them guys that's how you get to know how to cook you play with your food play with the ingredients if it doesn't work make a little note on your recipe card saying you know try this instead next time you know reduce this to this amount or whatever you really got to play with your food mm. well mom I hope I did you good and uh, I, I think I did a really good job on mimicking your potato salad. All right, well, this is Mark saying thanks again for watching, guys. Stay tuned next week. We'll get out on a hike. Or will we? I'm kind of thinking of my time frame here. I'm trying to decide because Jen and I will be going out camping soon. Literally within the next couple of days. And I'm trying to decide if... I'll have footage ready for you guys, or if I want to show any of us camping. Hmm. Maybe I'll just do highlights, you know. Maybe I'll just uh, do a hike when we're out at the park or something. So, yeah, we'll probably go up to the Wasota State Park, and I'll film a little hike while Jen and I are out camping. All right, then after that, we will go on a motorcycle ride. I haven't decided where we're going to go on that. Um... I would kind of like to get out and do an iron butt ride, but we'll see. All right. All right. This is Mark saying thanks again for watching. Thank you for the likes, the comments, the subscriptions, sharing the videos with your friends. It all helps the channel, guys. It really does. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumbs down. Okay. Either way, it helps the channel. All right. This is Mark saying thanks again for watching. See you guys on the road. Bye.